This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at the hypergraph. The hypergraph gives us a schematic view of all of the nodes in your scene file. Maya is a node-based editor. What that means is that whenever we create an object or even use some tools, nodes are generated and connected throughout Maya. This translates to potentially having hundreds or even thousands of individual nodes within a single scene file. So when I create Polygon Sphere, I just now generated several nodes. A single sphere does not use just one node. It actually takes several for it to be displayed and functional. So our hypergraph can show all of those nodes that contribute to this surface. To access the hypergraph, I'll choose Window and come down to Hypergraph. And I have two different options here. I have Hypergraph Hierarchy and the Hypergraph Connections. We'll start with the hierarchy. So when it comes up, all I see is a single node. This is because we have options inside of our hypergraph to hide certain nodes. Navigating in the hypergraph is just like navigating in the viewport. So we can use our same camera controls to pan and zoom. If we want to frame an object to our view, we can just hit F. Now, this is the same thing in our viewport. If I hit F there, It'll also frame our selection. So we'll zoom out and choose Options, Display, Shape Nodes. You can now see that the sphere node is separated into two separate nodes. We have on top the transform node, and then below it is the shape node. Now, both of these nodes always existed, they were just hidden inside of our hypergraph. If we open the attribute editor, we can see that these two tabs here represent these two nodes. So they're the same thing. The top node being our transform node shows all of our transformations. This is also the same as what shows up here in the channel box. So we get a lot of redundant information between the different editors and windows. The next node is our shape node. It holds the actual geometric information. And that is also the equivalent of this node here. And you can see when you select them, the tabs are also swapped inside of the attribute editor. Back to the hypergraph, we can go to Options, Display, and choose to show hidden nodes. And when we do that, we get a list of our cameras that were currently hidden. Now they still show up in our scene and we can still use them as they're each displayed here, side, front, and top, and of course our perspective, and all of them listed right here. These two are broken out into transform and shape nodes. Now we can also look at the different types of connections that come into a single node. These show up in the channel box under Inputs. We can view these in our hypergraph by opening a specific window and going to Hypergraph Connections, or in the same window, choosing the input and output connections icon. Both of these are identical and either method gets us to the same exact thing. Now when I choose it here in the inputs, you'll see that connection also highlight inside of my hypergraph. Again, redundant information 
Maya allowing you to view those nodes in multiple editors and windows. Now when you create a new node, and we'll create a cube, that will also show up inside of your hypergraph automatically. And it's selected in our viewport. And if I choose input and output connections, it'll refresh my window and show up. Now, whatever I have selected will be the current view inside of my hypergraph. Now, when I'm viewing these as connections in our hypergraph, we see that the transform nodes are separate. They do not have direct connections to their shape nodes. But the shape nodes share all of the connections of any type of history that is coming into that node. Now we can switch back to our hierarchy mode just by clicking the hierarchy icon. And then we can manipulate these nodes further inside of our hypergraph. We can do things like making parent-child relationships or connections. If I select the sphere and then use the middle mouse, I can drag that over to the cube and drop it. That's just letting go of the middle mouse. And now the sphere is a child of my cube. I can break this connection by middle mousing again on my sphere, keeping the button held, and just dragging into empty space. Doesn't matter where you drag it, it'll always just pop up next to the cube. Now we can change the way Maya lays out the nodes by toggling between freeform and automatic layout. Currently, we're in automatic layout. If I click this icon here, it'll change to a freeform. While I'm in freeform, I can grab a node and drag it anywhere within the window space. Now, as we accumulate more nodes in here, we'll want to scroll through the hypergraph to see the other nodes. We can do this by grabbing a node and banging it up against the side of the window and that will scroll the window over. Now, of course, we can still use our normal camera operations to zoom in and zoom out. This is just kind of a quicker way, especially if we're parenting or making connections. We can grab that node, drag it over, and then middle mouse and drag it onto it to create a relationship. Now, while we're in freeform mode, these nodes, can go anywhere and will stretch, increasing the distance between the two. At any time this becomes too cluttered, we can choose Edit, Reset Freeform Layout. We can confirm that and it will return back to a default position. And then we're free to move our nodes again. Then we can choose to switch and go back to the automatic layout. And that will also return our nodes, but it does not destroy the movements that we applied during our freeform layout. So at any time, I can click my freeform and it will go back to the setup I have. This is great when we have really complex scenes. We can move our nodes around into a structure and keep those positions. And then at any time, switch back to an automatic layout to view things in more of an alphabetic order. Now I say in alphabetic order, however, Maya does have node preferences, and you can see cameras are always positioned first, and then our geometry comes next. Every node inside of Maya has a priority and will be listed based upon that priority when we choose an automatic layout. We can also change the orientation by choosing Options, Orientation, and we'll go to Vertical, and that will now display our nodes in a vertical fashion. Or we can go to Schematic, where it will list it in more of a conventional schematic view.
Now, it's a good idea to work with the hypergraph open. This will get you used to seeing all of the various nodes and understand what they do. The hypergraph plays a key role in working in Maya and kind of acts as a hub for everything that comes into a scene. The bigger your scenes get, the more complex your node structures are going to become, and you'll end up with hundreds, maybe even thousands of nodes in here very, very quickly. So again, it's a good idea to always reference that hypergraph and see what's happening. It's also a great way to see what's happening under the hood, and as you make changes to geometry or to nodes, you'll actually see those nodes show up inside of the hypergraph. This concludes our movie on the hypergraph.